and welcome back. We are moving into our first segment of the morning. And this one, of course, for the love of country. In with us, we've got Kenya Hyde, Brittany Gordon, and Anne Lynn Pol Apollonia. She's no stranger, <laughs> and everybody knows her. She's no stranger to the screen. Guys, good morning and welcome. welcome. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for having me. For the love of country, something that everybody could relate to because we all love our country. Yes. Now, what is this about? Is it a play? Is it a for the love of country and we'll go and lift some weights? What's going on? Uh -huh. <laughs> there you go. Well, actually, it's, um, it's set in the 1930s and it honors one of our national figures, Antonio Soberanis. So it's a play though, right? It yes. is a oh, play, okay. a stage play that will be performed on the Bliss stage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I like that you mentioned that, you know, everybody knows Anna and Apollonia mm -hmm. because we, 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 we use that word loosely. Mm -hmm. You know, we may know somebody's name, mm -hmm. but we don't really know them. Know them. Yeah. And that is what I've found with Antonio Soberanis. Um, we know that he's a national figure, but really, what really do we know about his contributions to shaping Belize to what it is today? Mm -hmm. And so that is exactly what this, plays, this play does um, in providing education, the history of his contributions to shaping Belize. Wow. Now, the play is written by Joseph San Romero, mm -hmm. and uh, we know that uh, Joseph works uh, a lot with young people and he has been writing uh, different dramas and uh, participating in, in performance arts in general. So how did you three get involved in this particular play? Um, personally, um, I attend the same church with Joe. Okay. And so at church we do plays and mm -hmm. I've done Christmas plays with him in the past and then he said that when he was writing it, he said that this role was specifically for myself and Brittany playing sisters, which we have done in the past. Oh. Yes. yes, so as Kenya said, we've worked a lot with him before at our church and he's done many plays, as you said, for young people, mm -hmm. but this play specifically is not only for young people, like it can, you, everyone can be inspired by it and it's not only for our generation per se, because it talks a lot about issues that everyone, um, everyone experiences. So yes, I've worked with him before and he saw that I could fit this role, but he see that he knows that how this play can be for everyone and not only for people of our age. Definitely. What's the name of the characters that you, you will be playing? I play Sharon. And I play Bernice. Okay. <laughs> yes. And I'm Lynn? I'm Eunice. <laughs> <laughs> and who are these people in the in the story of Antonio Sobranes? Um Sharon is a young lady who grows up in a middle class household mm -hmm. that believes that a man defines her. And one would say she's a bit of a gold digger in the sense that, wow. yes, she looks for a rich husband and that's okay to want a rich husband. He defines me and I step the background and I take care of the household. Okay. Yes, mm. and my character, well, you see how the play is set in that time when people are often looked down upon if you weren't rich, if you weren't a man, and if you weren't white. So I'm a young lady and I'm growing up hearing all of this, but I have this kind of zeal to want something more and to want to be heard. So I'm quite the opposite of my sister and I follow in like not my father's footsteps, but more towards my mother. And I don't want what she wants and I want to be heard. So I often, you always see me bickering with my sister because we share different views. Yeah, yeah you got to break her out of that. <laughs> yes. I hope you were successful. <laughs> Show them on, Linda, what, oh, your, your character. Um, Eunice, basically she's a narrator. She's set the stage as to what exactly is happening in this time yeah and she introduces the play that yeah. is my role yeah so let's 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 get to uh, uh to the educational part of this where what did you guys get out of it what 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 um, sums up to you okay personally you always hear about antonio Soberanes, but this is the first time i learned simple facts about the fact that he was a barber mm -hmm. i had no, no idea. idea that Join he the club. was <laughs> And it speaks greatly to how his impact was fighting for equality and equal pay. And he just didn't take the pinch of pay that they were given at that time. And he fought and he did so respectfully, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. And what I gained from this, like recently I have been asked at school who is one of my heroes and someone that I look up to and instantly Antonio Sabranes came to mind because recently I've been getting so much information about him and so much things I didn't know. Like she said, I didn't know he was a simple barber. At that time, if you weren't a politician and you wanted to stick your nose in politics, people looked at you like, what are you doing here, you know? Like stay in your lane, do your barbering. But he <laughs> didn't take that. He was a human and he believed that how he should, you know, stand up for what is 
is right for him and for Belizeans. And also something that I gained from it was that, you know, it's not only the people that he inspired for just money, but also women, because like I said, my character wants to be heard. Mm -hmm. So he, just by hosting these revolts and these marches, he said to all women, you can be involved and you can make a difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Alan, as an educator, you are already aware of some of the information that's in the play, Definitely. I'm sure. But uh, working so in-depth with one person's story and a Belizean hero, what has the experience been like for you? It has been amazing, I must say, Anna. I have a new level of appreciation for Antonio Sobranes. I mean, I cannot imagine lining up for any rice lab day after this. <laughs> Personally, I, I can't imagine that. And in in appreciating it, it, it helps me to want to inspire other people to get to know about him so mm -hmm. they can see that, you know what, yes, he was a barber, mm -hmm. but you can ascend to greater heights despite yeah. your profession. You know, I would want to venture uh, uh, into what life is like for us right now and then ask Brittany and Kenya, what, what would be some of the things that you guys will be fighting for in today's day and age? Now, the reason for my question is because I'm listening to how passionate you guys are talking about Antonio Sabaranis, not only the play, but what you guys have learned from it and, 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 and fighting for equality and fighting for uh, equal pay and whatnot. So I'm thinking to myself, in today's day and age, we are hearing so many things that's going on, whether government or not. What are some of the things as young, vibrant women you would fight for in your country? I would fight for? Well. Personally, for me, mm -hmm. one thing that I um, greatly advocate for is for you know to for everyone that is black to realize that we are all equal. One thing I hear a lot that often discourages me is when people are ashamed because of their skin color and they're like, "Oh, I'm not black, I'm brown," and really that doesn't make any sense because black is defining not only your skin tone but your culture. And one thing I advocate greatly for is that how you know all of us should be grateful for all the rich culture that we have here. We live where people come to vacation. And we should be proud of that, you know. Yeah. And also, we should also, you know, just stand up and not be ashamed to say that, yes, I am black, I am a woman, and I'm proud of it. And in today's age, especially at school, you know, a lot of people like to tease each other, especially about skin color. And I'm just off on the sidelines watching, and I'm like, you don't realize you're one and the same. And you should be lifting each other up instead of bringing each other down. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Well, personally, I have strong convictions about women being able to do anything, which totally contradicts my character. <laughs> but it's just myself, don't know what I want to do after high school, but knowing that the possibilities are open for me. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. in a country like Belize, there's so many possibilities and opportunities to study and further my education and become something big and make a major impact on my country. Now, the story is set uh, in the 1930s. So that's a discovery for all of you to understand how people, young women, uh, or in general, how, how uh, the characters would have lived in that time. Yeah. What was most surprising for you from life in the 1930s? Most <sighs> um, and did you do your own <laughs> research to find out? Uh, Some of it. Yeah. Um, what was surprising for me was realizing that back then, um, all the British, um, how great of an influence they had on the people around us. Like our family, as it said, we're a middle class family, but yet we act like we're white, quote unquote white, because our dad works with the British, so we have to uphold kind of a class. And we don't talk Creole, we talk in English because we've been around so many of the British um, people coming in. Mm -hmm. And so that really surprised me because I thought that everyone back then, you know, had like that old Creole rich language. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, different to experience. And I don't know if it saddens me, but it's just interesting to think that how great of an influence they had on our culture even back then. Yeah. What surprised me the most was basically the oppression of the woman in that time to dream to become something more than just a housewife. Because of the example that I have today, you have working moms who are still taking care of their household, but back then that wasn't it. You had one job and one job only to take care of your family mm. in the house. Yeah. Yep. And for me, um, we always hear about men being chauvinistic and, and condescending during that period, but I think to actually go through it and to witness it, ah, it becomes real. Yeah. And I know that I would not be able to fit in, in that time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, 
So actually experiencing it, it's so, yeah. I'm so happy to see that women have digressed away from that and are able to, you know, have a voice. Yeah. Yes. You know, that is so powerful because I think mm. the simple fact that uh, you are able to identify how far we have come as women, um, especially uh, moving away from the predefined role that mm -hmm. was that of mother and nurturer. Yes. Um, but we still have challenges today. Yes. And mm -hmm. when you hear, and it, you know, some of the mentalities that we are speaking about still exist in mm -hmm. our society today. When you think of the work that went in within the, the, the time period of the play, um, and knowing that you still have some women who are struggling with breaking free from that identity, what does it mean for you? What would you say to these people about the work that went in to get here? Well, you know, just looking back on all the things that women have gone through, like I think that how each and every woman should be grateful and honor all the work that women in the past have put in that you hear about strong women um, who have gone through struggles and have worked hard for us to gain rights so you shouldn't abuse those rights or ignore them you know you should honor them and try your best to live as a woman should you know like just let everyone hear your voice and let your thoughts be heard mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To reiterate the thoughts of Brittany, it's basically not pushing us back so much years and to keep pushing forward. Yes, it's going to be hard to stand out and have your voice be heard, mm -hmm. but first you have to believe in yourself or nobody will believe in you. Mm -hmm. That's definitely th true. Um, it's very important that we know where we came from. Yeah. Yes. That way we are able to, to know that we don't want to go back there. Mm -hmm. And I think the water slides on us, for us to be strong women, for mm -hmm. us to, to set that example. I mean, look at these two young ladies. Yeah. Outstanding. Outstanding, yeah. well-spoken. Yeah. And they will grow into great women doing great things. Future leaders. You know, exactly. and that's the thing, uh, listening, to, listening to them talk, uh, that's the thing that's most touching to me. Besides the fact that they're educated about who... Uh, what happened back then and, 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 and where it places us in today's society. The thing about it is that the, 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 mindset, the mindset that they gain from it. Now, uh, in terms of getting actors, and I, I know, you know, Joe is not here and he would have been the person to eventually step on this, but you guys are in it. Did you guys have to turn back some actors? Because in terms of the, in terms of the, the, the educational aspect, from the mere fact that you guys are talking like this, I am sure there were people who you gained on your side and who wanted to be a part of this play. Did some people have to be turned back? Because this is great. <laughs> um, well, from experience speaking with Joe, mm -hmm. I don't see that he had to turn back anyone because he already had an idea mm -hmm. of when he wrote the play, mm -hmm. who would be able to fulfill what role. And he was able to put his trust in people like us and the different actors on um, cast. And sure, there were some roles that were switched or moved around a little bit. But at the end of the day, he knew his um, he knew his actors and he knew his cast and he yeah. knew our capabilities and what we could do. Yeah. Like I want to be an extra. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to ask, you mm -hmm. know, you are delivering uh, a performance, uh, but this performance carries a lot of weight. For some yeah. people, this will be the biggest exposure they have to the life and contribution of Antonio Soberanis. I mean, is that something that you have already accepted and that you take on stage with you that I need to deliver what it was really like, uh, the, the traditional mentality at that time, what it was like to oppose at that time. Is it a lot of pressure for you? Personally, it is for me. <laughs> like, I had to go on YouTube videos to look and see how a woman of class would carry herself, the way she would walk, simple demeanor, and the way that she would behave, so that I could completely embody my character and become her and not be Kenya playing Sharon, but become Sharon. Yeah. So yes, it is a lot of weight on you, but it's just putting in that work to make, making sure that your character comes across. Yeah. And for me personally, I didn't fa feel as much pressure as Kenya because I somewhat feel like I'm already Bernice because I already <laughs> want to be heard and I already want to push and advocate for women's rights. But mm -hmm. in order of like finding the class, um, being able to walk with class and talk with class, I did have to do extra research on that because as she said, she's not Kenya going on stage, she's Sharon and I am not Brittany, I'm Bernice. Right. And when I'm on that stage, I am no one else but Bernice and I am <laughs> playing that character, but I'm also becoming that character. And what 
what about the Queen's English? Did you master that? <laughs> oh, <gasps> yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, you know, and, and, and what about your role? You, you mentioned you are the narrator, but you'll probably be set in a time period as well, right? Uh, definitely, yeah. but um, like the ladies mentioned, um, we were written into this play, yeah. Yeah. so Joseph knows our strengths. And honestly, I am Eunice all over. <laughs> Maybe not the name, right? But I am definitely a Eunice. So yeah. it, it's, it becomes so natural for me to be on stage because what she says, I would probably say too. Yeah. <laughs> was there any particular uh, part of the script that was difficult for you to deliver? Maybe just because it went against your own personal values or just... It was hard to connect. Um, for me, it was my diatribe with my sister and mother, where I'm pushing down my beliefs on my mother that a man is a representation of myself and that I'm no longer me. That was hard to grasp and embody that character and completely deliver these lines as Sharon would. Yeah. Because I would not agree with anything that she's saying. <laughs> How does one come up with these thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> and for me personally, I would say it's the same diatribe. Yeah. Not because it contradicts my beliefs, but simply because it's very poetic. And I find that when you have it set on your shoulders that you need to inspire people, a lot more pressure is put on you. Because I am not only speaking on behalf of Mr. Joseph, I'm speaking on behalf of Antonia Sobranes and the woman in that time. And I also want to not only inspire people my age but I want to try and inspire everyone so that men can come and see wow women are powerful so it was just a bit you know a pressure yeah. to remember and it is something that I have to learn and continuously practice on yeah. Yeah. now I, I want all your perspectives but I'll start with Anlin as an educator because you understand that obviously when you're working with young people mm -hmm. or uh, and that will probably be part of the audience there <laughs> You want to yeah. be able to deliver a story, but it has to be something they can connect with and mm -hmm. something that is interesting to them. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes when we talk about history, it's very preachy and it's yeah. kind of, does the play, is the play able to deliver the message and the value of the contribution of Antonio Sobranes without having you feel like you're sitting in a civics class? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what, what do we call it now? So, so, so so okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely, Marlene. Um, it has the comedic Mm. aspect yeah. which yeah. means if you're laughing you're, you're definitely enjoying and learning something yeah. and that's what I try to do as a teacher make learning fun yeah mm -hmm. if you make it fun they're right there with you yeah. so it although it has that historical aspect the comedic aspect definitely brings it down and even the language it's not at a high high level so anybody can actually understand. come and sit down and learn and appreciate and understand what is happening yeah. how long is the play and uh, when is it going to be because you know, I got caught. <laughs> so how long is the play and when is it going to be and where? It's going to be, we have two shows. The premiere is the 7th, which is next Thursday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we have an encore on Friday, the 8th Sweet. of September. Um, it's going to be stage on the Bliss stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> and costumes and, yes. and props. And yes. So it's a full production. Yes. Okay. And what are the costs of the tickets to go in? Um, the tickets, you have $20 for the reserve, 15 for general, and 10 for teachers and students, which is also oh. general as well. And you have a discount price for groups of five or more. Nice. Yes. Wow. And let me, you know, I, I want to get some. The benefit of having the actresses here is that we get to get some behind the scenes moment or some previews. And <laughs> I'm sure if you're talking about a story like this, there has to be some moment where you just, you get cool seed, like we'd say. Yeah. It really just is a very powerful moment for you. Do you have those moments within the play? Yes. yes. So can we have one? <laughs> sure, no problem. Yes, tell me, without giving the whole story away, because we don't want to have um, spoilers. Mm -hmm. um, the same part that Kenya and I were speaking about earlier, which is a diatribe between us two sisters, that is one very powerful moment where we truly have to bring it because we're inspiring others. So this one is just about us, like, um, it's our thoughts bouncing around, and not mm -hmm. only our thoughts, but our mothers as well. And it's her and I contradicting each other, going back and forth. Yeah. So we can mm -hmm. show you that. 
We have it? Yes. They oh, we have the clip? No, no. They will do it. Let me see oh this. Oh, so. Setting back to Axel. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So we no longer have Kenya and Brittany mm. on set. No. Brittany. We have Bernice mm. and Sharon. 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 Right. Okay. He's my image. My image is his. His essence is my presence. Absent his ego, I am invisible. I am but a mere shadow in the wind blowing with time. Aging, dying, and never purposeful without a ring. Do you see how it shines? To think otherwise would mean one is not well. Are you well, mother? Are you sick? Such nonsense makes me ache. The very words my sister utters are like cannons fired at an already shattered wall. So her salt bears no courage. Lies poured on sand that soaks it in. Unless the heat dries, said lies and evaporates into fumes of nothing. Mother, you are well. His essence is not your being. His presence does not give weight to your figure. He is man and you are woman. Not to be subdued by wicked malice, but cherished. Take heed of the haste you make, mother, for in a world of silver and gold, you bear an empty purse. Take note of the cause and embrace being frightened. It will keep your mind sung. Don't be academically muted, mother. Stay where you matter, for this world is cold. What does that even mean? Two opposing tosses indicative of confusion. Mother, you are not well. An illustration on the very matter of inequality, my dear sister. Father does not share the view that men should speak of better living when a shilling is a shilling. He says that men of low stature should be grateful to even exist. How much you annoy me, sister, indulging mother in her societal contradictions. And you are father's ideologist, fitted in skin and bones, robbing humanity of any dignity built into men and women. And for what? For the purpose of self-gain? Shame! Wake, Wake up! up. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I felt like I had to jump yeah, in a yeah, party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew Adeline is strong enough to yeah. keep you guys apart. <laughs> wow. Fantastic. We appreciate you giving us a preview. And of course, that was just on set without the costumes and the full setting. And this is such a great initiative coming out from uh, Joseph. We know he's very passionate mm -hmm. about the arts. And uh, he obviously had to get some support for it as well. So you guys wanted to be able to discuss that a bit? Yes, definitely. Uh -huh. And before we even look at the sponsors, I just want to inform Belize that you see this quality of presentation. <laughs> very much, is, very much so and intense. And it's across the cast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody is up to that level. Wow. So you're, mm -hmm. you're in front of <laughs> We got to get the ticket locations as well. Yeah, go ahead. Um, we have to thank our sponsors, Atlantic International Bank, we have Niche, Youth Department, David Matas, Go Graphics, and Carter's Upholstery. Okay. okay. And where can people get their tickets? Um, they can con contact any of the cast members mm -hmm. along with Joseph Stamp. Okay. And also available at Bliss. Mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. Well, most people would eventually uh, know that <laughs> at the Bliss. But the intensity of it is what drives a lot of people. And because of the intensity, you want to listen to what's next. And this mm -hmm. is how you get the historical aspect Definitely. of the play. Excellent work. So my final question is, uh, it's, it's your test. Who is Antonio Sobranes? Who is it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Shad. I want everybody to give me a different answer. So if you start first, you get the easy one. Yeah. <laughs> Antonio Sobranes to me is an, uh, an iconic man who works towards equality among not only the people who are of lower class, but everyone, everyone, female, male, no matter your gender, you deserve equality, equal pay, equal everything. Mm -hmm. We had the same rights, we were human beings. Mm -hmm. For me, Antonio Soranis was a common man, mm -hmm. and he did great things. Um, he was able to inspire, like she said, not only men, but also women, mm -hmm. to go beyond what was their strictures, their limitations, and so I appreciate him even much more now. Mm -hmm. um, for me, Antonio Sabranes is a Belizean and a proud one at that, and he is an example of what every Belizean should instill in their hearts and instill in their minds and how they act. He is a Belizean who was proud and not afraid to stand up for what he believed in, even if it meant standing alone. So Antonio Sabranes is a hero, but not because he was rich and powerful, but because he was able to stand up for what was right. Okay, right. yeah. now that means everybody has to go out and watch the play. Yep. <laughs> it I think you guys have done a fantastic job in enticing us to select our date right. and head out to the bliss. It's 
September 7th and 8th, which is next Thursday and Friday. It starts at 7.30. Mm -hmm. uh, the tickets are $20, you said? 20 for reserve, 20 for reserve. 15 for general, 10 for students and teachers, and groups have discounts. Wow. Okay. And you can contact the cast members to be able to get your tickets so that you can be a part of the show. Thank yes. you, ladies, for stopping in. We appreciate it. Thanks Thank for you for having us. us. Great job. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to seeing you all on stage. I can only imagine how great it will be. We have to go ahead and take a break now. When we come back, we'll be talking to representatives of the Belize Medical Associates about their upcoming medical symposium. So stay tuned.